Hello, this is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast Podcast. Today we're talking about EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies, radio frequencies, and electromagnetic radiation. 5G, 4G, much to be said. This is technically challenging and information dense. Here we go. The dangers of 5G and other EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies. Yes, I would like to help you make sense of all the technical jargon and help you have a better experience as you go forward. My name is Martin Patella. This is a picture of me from a few years ago. I am the health coach at Life Enthusiast. Uh, I am a certified metabolic tapping advisor. Metabolic typing is a functional medicine type of a discipline where we are focusing on how genetics and your nutritional behaviors intersect, helping people understand what they should eat and why. I also train as a clinical hypnotherapist, so I have training in uh, uh, dealing with the subconscious and how to clear emotional problems. In my previous life, I was uh, working in the information technology field. I have uh, the equivalent of an MBA in computer science and business administration, and I've trained a lot of people in computer technologies and technical issues. So here's the key point. All living creatures are electrical beings. I mean, that includes plants too. All reactions that involve an exchange of electrons are in fact electrochemical reactions. So when we subject the creature ourselves to the electromagnetic radiation, we are changing the environment in which this transaction is taking place. Uh, you have been hearing that there are issues with the 5G. The 5G isn't on in great many places yet. There have been these target cities where the 5G has been rolled in early, like Washington, D.C., New York City, um, Atlanta, uh, I think da Dallas or Houston, I forget. Anyway, here's a link to a map. So if you can see it, mperf.com. Uh, has a really cool map where you can find your location and see what antennas are currently lit up and whether they're 4G or 5G. The symptoms of electromagnetic interference, uh, the most common ones, will include headaches, mood swings, skin itching, and downright burning. And... Uh, when it's on for a long time, it develops into chronic conditions, and we'll discuss that in great detail. I have started getting calls from these early lit up cities, especially New York. People are calling me with concerns. I'll, I'll explain what they are. If you want to uh, try an experiment to see whether electromagnetic frequencies, even of the lower frequency, will have an effect on you. Here's the proposed experiment. Put yourself in uh, front of your television set, like stick your nose in it, and uh, then watch that TV from up close. And uh, let's see. I bet you will feel affected. You will probably uh, have problems with your vision, and you will probably have some kind of tiredness and some kind of a headache. Here's what we are learning. Um, the metabolism of chronic disease, uh, we are now starting to understand what's causing it and how it works, the mechanism. And the key molecule of the stress is peroxynitrite. And the chemical formula is O-N-O-O, -O -O. oh no. And what it does, it, it's, it's involved in uh, multiple processes in the human body. 
in oxidative stress, which uh, causes uh, free radical imbalances. That's the aging, that's the rusting of the human body. So as you're rolling forward, you will notice things like wrinkles and, uh, and loss of function. Things won't work as well as they used to. Mitochondrial dysfunction, that's how well you're able to convert food into energy. And that's the fatigue, tiredness, brain fog, not able to think as clearly, not able to um, work at the intensity that you used to or last as long as you used to. Chronic inflammation, that's, of course, uh, the, the, the center of all chronic disease. Um, loss of function being the central uh, tenet here. Uh, inflammation has five symptoms. Uh, loss of function, pain, redness, heat, and swelling. Of course, sometimes when it's on the inside, you won't see the redness or the swelling. You may perceive the heat. Illnesses of inflammation have this itis or otis in their name, so arthritis or diabetes or uh, many. Nitrative or NO something stress is affecting your neurotransmitters. It's affecting the precursors to dopamine and precursors to serotonin. So you will have issues with sleep and you will have issues with enjoyment of life. It's, uh, it's driving the um, uh, mood problems, the biggest epidemic. In fact, would you know, the most prescribed drug or drugs of all, 75% of all prescriptions are for changing of the mood, dealing either with depression or with anxiety. And then there's the autonomic dysfunction, the autonomic being the uh, sympathetic versus parasympathetic or the management of the fight or flight or freeze versus rest, repair, digest. So that affects greatly your mood, your sleep, your ability to recover, your ability to uh, stay peaceful. It also is involved in the endothelial function. Endothelial, that's the uh, membrane, that's the uh, interface between the hostile outside and the protected inside. It also could be called epithelial, which of course that means skin. When you have leaky barriers, that would be the leaky gut, but it could be leaky lungs, and it could be leaky brain. These barriers are supposed to protect the uh, organs that need protecting from things that shouldn't get in. But with this dysfunction, we see them uh, broken. The epithelial, that's skin lesions, breakouts, that would be... Uh, uh, seborrheic reactions, skin problems. All of these are related to the rising levels of peroxynitrite, the underlying mechanism of this problem. And how do we see this represent itself? Here's a table on the screen that shows us the disease growth. These are statistics for United States from 1990 for, to 2015. So in 25 years, the incidence of autism has gone, gone up 2,100%. That's 21-fold. Celiac disease, 11-fold. ADHD, 8-fold. Hypothyroidism, 7-fold. Osteoarthritis, 4.5-fold. Sleep apnea, same diabetes threefold, Alzheimer's threefold, depression threefold, panic disorder two and a half fold, autoimmune of all kinds two and a something fold, asthma uh, 142 percent, that's one and a half times. What's it do to us? In the United States out of 400 or 340, 50 million people, 170 million are suffering from some chronic health issue. That's about half the population or close to. And the amount of money that's spent on this is about 
two and a half trillion dollars. And these are curable diseases. And these 36 diseases are sharing the common cause, which is what we talked about, this peroxynitrite dysregulation. This information comes to us from the website called searchforcause.com. Um, I'll refer to it in a moment, but look at this chart where we're looking at the expected rise in now, the percentage of population going from 45 to about 50 percent. It's, it's just staggering. This is the chronic illness prevalence and how it's affecting the cost to the society. Uh, I've listened to uh, information put forward by Richard A. Lear, a researcher. He's a wonderful fellow, and he's explaining the peroxynitrate really well. And on the website searchforcost.com, you can see more details about it. He's classing these illnesses in four groups, autoimmune, metabolic, sleep, and neurological. And um, you can see a list of them on screen. Uh, it starts with the most common ones like celiac, lupus, multiple sclerosis, uh, POTS, that's postural orthostatic something syndrome. You get dizzy when you stand up. COPD, that's lungs. <sighs> Mitral valve prolapse, that's unexpected. You wouldn't think that it's autoimmune, but it is. Back pain, you would think that it's a physical problem. Yes, it is, but the trigger, the underlying condition, the root cause is immunity. Carpal tunnel syndrome and plantar fasciitis and interstitial cystitis and Sjogren's, Hashimoto's, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, fibromyalgia, migraine, and a hundred more names. You see, the mainstream medical system likes to name things after the geography, where in the body this happens without considering the cause. But the cause for all of this that I just read is in the immune system not working right. So some of them are neurological, such as autism and ADHD, or the inability to focus or concentrate, or more to say, inability to be able to see one thing at a time. You know, when you come into a room, like a, like a party, where it's quite noisy and there are 20 different conversations going on. With normal neurology, you're able to focus on the one thing that you want to focus on and you're able to tune out everything else. With this uh, autism or ADD, um, activation it's as if you are playing five stations on the radio at the same time at the same volume and you cannot possibly make out what you want to make out and other brain issues like alzheimer's that's neurological fibromyalgia that's actually your amygdala the stress response center not processing inputs correctly um, anxiety that has to do with uh, just how we respond to inputs Every depression is the opposite side of the same coin. And OCD, that would be obsessive compulsive behaviors, just unable to be regular. In the metabolic side of things, we're dealing with obesity and diabetes, or sometimes it's called diabetes. Essentially, you're dysregulated, your body is not responding correctly. The insulin resistance of the cells is causing the inability to convert food into energy even though the energy is available and thyroid regulation that has to do with how you regulate temperature uh, hypothyroidism is rampant now and it's causing things like uh, inability to lose weight um, other symptoms include hair loss and uh, not able to stay warm or at least being cold or other issues. And then the uh, problems that I already mentioned, the skin and the barrier, leaky gut, inability to eat gluten. This is not a fad. 
there are there is a rising number of people who are having terrible reactions from eating gluten foods and that's not just wheat wheat is the main source of gluten but it could be uh, corn rye barley and other grains in sleep uh, the, the disorders of the sleep they will include things like apnea sleep apnea that is right or interrupted breath where all of a sudden instead of breathing regularly the body shuts down and takes 30 seconds 50 seconds without taking a breath and then becoming hypoxic insomnia when you either are not able to go to sleep or waking up in the middle of the night and then not able to go back to sleep which are sleep disturbances you can help uh, regulate this problem the emfs are one of them electromagnetic frequencies but blue light is another and of course it's associated with how the circadian rhythm in the body works you want to be able to um, be able to tell your body that it's time to go to sleep blue light is the signal that says wake up be alert be awake that's the light from the morning and mid of the day but also that's the light that's coming off the computer screen and phone screen so you want to make sure that you can put either a filter as in like filtered glasses or filter on the screen or use an app that's going to twist your monitor's colors toward the uh, uh, red side of the spectrum and away from the blue side of the spectrum and shift work of course is a very difficult thing to deal with so if you're having sleep problems and are a shift worker you may need to change careers <laughs> anyway what i wanted to point out is this even the 4G phones, before the 5G even comes in, are failing the SAR regulation. The SAR is the absorption test, where you hold the phone to your head. or When, when the phone is on, it's putting out a certain amount of energy, watts per, uh, I don't know what time, energy radiated out. And uh, the, the industry is concerning itself only with the heat side, as if your phone were acting as a microwave and you were trying to warm up your food. You must have seen the uh, uh, funny video on YouTube where these Japanese students set popcorn on the table and set several phones down and then uh, phone all the phones and as soon as the phones start ringing the corn starts popping that's because there's heat being generated the same way as it's generated in a microwave oven that's what a phone set does so you do not want to hold it against your head you want to hold it away away from your body you want to be using it in text mode or or uh, on the speaker mode Here's an interesting statistics. I shared it uh, in our previous recording um, when we were talking about the effects of, um, of the COVID infection. These were the death rates as recorded countrywide by Worldometer about the rates of death, depending on what. Well, look at the names of the diseases. Cardiovascular, diabetes, respiratory, hypertension, and cancer. Every one of these is made worse by the environmental effects. That's what we're talking about. What are the environmental effects? Well, since about 1985, we have been increasing the rates of use of glyphosate. It's a herbicide known as Roundup. First, it was used to just uh, kill off uh, weeds in the fields. They introduced the uh, um, Roundup-ready corn that you could uh, grow quicker and more efficiently. But 
the use of glyphosate has increased since. They are now using it on wheat because when you spray glyphosate on wheat, it dries up and drives more energy into the uh, into the grain. So you, you get a more consistent and easier to harvest product. So the farmers are using it and the industry is saying, this is safe, don't worry about it, use it. I'm here to tell you that the day comes when we all know that it wasn't safe and that it was wrecking our health. The increased use of antibiotics in feedlots. Our animals are now uh, processed or raised, I should say, in factories packed tightly in a small space. In order to avoid illnesses to rise, they're being fed antibiotics preemptively, not because they need it, but because they gain weight faster and because it prevents illnesses. But when these antibiotics pass through the system all the way into the food that we eat, it's causing difficult problems. Microparticulates in the air, that's, that's essentially industrial pollution. That's the dust from traffic and from factories and from uh, agriculture because the fields are drying and the soil is blowing away. The smaller the particle and the higher the number of the particles, the more sick we get. In fact, wouldn't you know it, Wuhan in China is one of the most polluted places on the planet. Heavy metals in our water you may have heard of Flint, Michigan. That's where it really blew up when they switched water supplies and uh, they made some errors and lead was starting to leach from the old pipes into the water. But this situation exists and persists in many cities. In the, in the times when the cities were being built, 150 and 200 years ago, they were actually using lead pipes for the last segment of the distribution. The water mains are usually iron, but the last segment, segment is usually lead. So there are probably millions of households in the United States that are getting too much lead in the water. And mercury, that's even worse. Mercury is raining from the skies because coal burning power plants are blowing mercury into the air. That's why the ocean fish are dangerous to eat because mercury stays in and accumulates at the top of the food chain. So large fish like tuna or mahi-mahi are containing more of the mercury than the small ones like sardines and uh, sprats. And then the rise of the EMF, that's electromagnetic. Uh, and then it's the rise of EMF electromagnetic frequencies and RF, radio frequencies, in the environment. The RF, the radio frequency, that's the uh, upslope of the wave. And EMF, electromagnetic, that's the downslope of the wave. They are related to one another. The point is, they add stress to our bodies. That's what's changed. So it's not just the 5G, it's all of this stuff. Well, the 5G itself, what is it? Well, the G stands for generation. So we're now on the 4G or 4G plus currently and expecting to roll into the fifth generation. With each increasing generation, we are increasing the um, frequency. You know, that the, uh, the frequency is the uh, how fast the wave goes up and down. The higher the frequency, the more data it can carry. The amplitude is how tall the wave is, and that's like the strength of the signal. So presently, the um, 4G operates at the frequencies of between about half gigahertz to five gigahertz. So don't confuse the 5G, which is on some routers, five gigahertz, it's not a 5G router. It might just mean that it's 
operating at five gigahertz, which is about the top end of the fourth generation of equipment. Verizon is showing that it's going to be operating either in the 28 gigahertz or 39 gigahertz bands. There will be <laughs> a lot of data moving. What's the big deal? Well, it's about 40 times the capacity and half the latency. The latency is how long it takes for the signal to go from one place to another and through the equipment. So the current equipment is somewhere around 40 to 50 milliseconds. In best cases, about 20 milliseconds, and we're expecting about 10 milliseconds of latency. So that means that there's less delay in, from one side to the other. And the other big deal is the number of devices. How many devices can you connect to any one antenna? Right now, uh, we're connecting somewhere around 10,000 to 50,000 devices to a single antenna at any one time. With the uh, 5G, you'll be able to connect a million devices to the same antenna. That means that you can have all kinds of stuff talking to, to the cell tower. These high frequencies have been explored by the military. There has been military use for this. In fact, uh, crowd control, some kind of an immobilization device, has been used in test mode on large crowds, on gatherings. What it does, it causes people's skin to feel like they're burning. It goes past itching into downright burning, just unbearable. Here's what I want to note. Uh, you may think that you're being protected by the uh, regulatory agencies, by the governments, the, uh, the FDA, the FCC, and the EPA that should be involved in regulating the electromagnetic radiation put into the air. Like, if you can think of us like fish in an aquarium, we're swimming in an aquarium of this electromagnetic energy that's rising. When we evolved back thousands of years ago, the only electromagnetic stuff that was reaching us was whatever came from the sun. And we have the Van Allen belts around the planet that actually protect us from the... Um, cosmic radiation that the sun puts out. Our regulatory agencies have decided that the only concern that they have is if the EMFs or the radiation is creating heat, the microwave effect, microwave as in microwave oven. They do not concern themselves with the other health effects, even though there are now several thousand studies documenting what I'm going to tell you next. Here's how it works. The effects on living cells are produced th through the voltage-gated calcium channel. The surface of every cell, the cell membrane, um, has a lot of different doors on it. Normally it's locked up and it doesn't let anything out or anything in but these doors are open, sort of knock, knock, please open and we go in. Well, this particular, particular channel that regulates the autonomic response, because calcium is the mineral that causes the stress response to go from uh, balanced to sympathetic, the fight or flight. Whereas the magnesium is the relax, repair and uh, digest reaction. So this voltage-gated calcium channel opens up and floods the cell with calcium when you are in the presence of the signal. What's that mean? You are supposed to be in the sympathetic mode maybe three to five percent a day and the rest of the time in the non-stressed that's becoming rare. The effect is also on germline cells those are the sperms and eggs, and these are genetic mutations. And mutation is a permanent thing. When you mutate a chromosome, it's passed on to the offspring, 
it doesn't just go on and off. It's a mutation. It's a permanent change. We are also noticing that the fertility is reduced. The, uh, uh, the large, densely populated cities are experiencing significant reductions. Like, for example, Singapore's um, reproductive rate has gone down by 41% in the last few years. The uh, fertility, especially with men, you know, the sper sperm count and sperm quality, motility, how fast they are capable of moving, is declining rapidly. In fact, I'm aware of a test that was done on some mice. These mice were uh, in a cage right by a router. And uh, first generation had lower birth rate, second generation had half the birth rate and third generation was not at all having any children no pups so they were of course exposed 100 percent of the time living under a router we don't have that but we're getting close so these effects will be projected onto the moods anxiety versus depression your sleep, whether you can sleep or not sleep, memory, whether you are able to recall things or whether you are able to store, let's convert um, recent memory or recent events into long-term memory. You will notice that in older people that they will remember things wonderfully clearly from their childhood or young, young years, but not be able to tell you what they did yesterday or a year ago. Rise in pain and rise in fatigue. And I mentioned the endothelial permeability, the leaky gut and the brain fog, and the skin itching and burning, and heart palpitations. Those are the effects that you can expect from the radiation. The mitigation to how to deal with it, how can we do better, is we need to lower the load. How? Well, we need to clean up our world. We need to... Uh, apply it to all aspects of our lives, because we will not be able to mitigate everything. So clean air, get an air filter, go more into the forests, try to stay away from dirty industrial air. Same for water. Definitely drink filtered water. Do not trust city water. You have no business trusting that. At the very least, use the prills that we offer. Food, eat organic, vote with your dollars. I know for some people it's going to be difficult to justify the expense, but I promise you, you can either spend the money now or you can spend it later. If, if you at all are able to do that, switch to organic. Support the organic farmers. It's important because in the economy, the dollars, the, the, the money, is the oxygen that either gives life or withdrawal of which takes away the life. So if as long as you're supporting the right side of the equation, we'll survive this. You need to be aware what's coming into your life in the way of volatile organic compounds. Cosmetics, cleaning products, air fresheners, all of that stuff, just don't. Eliminate it. Same goes for clothing, furniture, and packaging. Really become aware that things that gas off, things that smell, are not good for you. We need to eliminate heavy metals. There are techniques that we offer. I found zeolite to be really effective. EDTA is also very good at uh, binding and excreting heavy metals, especially mercury and lead. Worry about drugs. We have found in this latest round with the um, COVID infection that people who were on statins, that's cholesterol lowering drugs, and ACE inhibitors, that's, you know, the ACE, that's the, that's uh, um, the regulation of blood pressure. People on those drugs were having a much worse outcome of their infections than others. 
and of course, try and stay away from the uh, microparticulates. Also, you would want to protect your electric body. So how, right? As I was mentioning, every transaction is an electrochemical transaction. You have two nerves, or a nerve has uh, a gap, and the transmission takes place from one end to the other. There's a little chemical electric spark that has to jump from one side to the other. And this has to be protected. Grounding gets more electrons into your body. That's the anti-aging. That's the uh, power to live, life force. Bare feet on the ground. Raw food, uncooked food that's grown in the ground is loaded with these electrons. So whether it's raw carrots or raw cucumbers or raw lettuce, that's the good stuff. A huge issue is dirty power. Dirty power is what's coming into your house through the uh, 50 or 60 hertz lines. The new electric meters, the electronic meters, as opposed to the analog old ones, are much worse at pumping this uh, dirty power into the house. It's, it's actually really wild because the, the circuitry in your house, you know, all the wiring that starts at your uh, distribution panel and runs through the walls to every light switch and, lights, uh, and uh, electric socket, it can act as an antenna broadcasting this dirty power into your house. There's equipment available. It costs somewhere around $1,200, $1,500 to... Um, to uh, take care of the wiring of the house. I'm thinking that it's probably going to become a required modification for anyone who's electrosensitive. Right now, we think it's somewhere around 20 to 30% of the population who are electrosensitive that are having these effects. That the percentage will be rising with the rising load of the industrial problems. One thing you can certainly do for yourself is to turn off the Wi-Fi. Use wired. It's, you can have a wired router going through the uh, RJ45 cable to your port on your computer. Even cell phones can be wired or connected to a wired port. When you're at home, instead of being in the Wi-Fi mode, try to be in the wired mode. And especially at night when you're not using it, you would want to uh, switch to that. There are now routers coming to the market that are uh, able to switch themselves off. When there is no device talking to them, they just shut down. But of course, <laughs> when I turn on my uh, Wi-Fi, I can see that there are five or six uh, signals that I could connect to with more than three bars. So that means my neighbors are irradiating me anyway. So I'm going to have to take to other tools. Harmonize. I'll talk about that. Grounding. Um, you can walk on the beach barefoot or get a grounded mat or you could consider the electron charger. It's not the cheapest thing going. Right now we're selling these for $1,600. The electron charger supplies your body with the electrons that you would normally get if you were still living the hunter-gatherer farmer life in contact with the dirt, with the planet. We, we have been recommending the ADR technology. They're able to uh, harmonize water or harmonize the space. And there are these little protective devices. The Blue Shield devices are actually actively sending signals to the body to harmonize itself. The, the way I would describe it is this way. Imagine that you have a dog and a Person comes to the door and the dog starts barking and be all unhappy and nervous. 
You can just turn to the dog, pet it, and tell it, this is okay, just stand down, and the dog stops barking. That's the sort of treatment that the uh, Blue Shield is providing your immune system in reaction to the outside signal. Yes, the uh, Wi-Fi is still coming in and it's still signaling to your body that it should go into stress, but the Blue Shield device is sending a uh, soothing signal saying, don't worry about it, be well. Here's a thermograph that shows what happens to a body after a session of grounding. On the left side of the picture, you see these red patches that's, uh, that's inflammatory reaction. You know, high temperature, I mentioned heat earlier, is one of the symptoms of inflammation. So that the higher the temperature, the higher the level of inflammation. And um, two hours of treatment and most of the fires have extinguished. Here's what's interesting beyond the health applications. The 5G has society-wide implications. In, in the 4G, the phone is the device. In the 5G, you are the device. Let me describe it. In 4G, uh, you want to take a car ride. You start the app, you dial in, you uh, call Uber or Lyft, and uh, the, the car is summoned to you. You need to have the app in the phone, you need to have uh, logged your credit card, and you need to have arranged for payments on the account and so on. In 5G, with the internet of things that is all around us now with thousands upon thousands of cameras on the street. You just step outside of the building, you uh, look at the camera, you raise your hand or whatever the gesture is, and you say, call me Uber. They already know who you are. They call you Uber. The uh, driver is coming. Maybe if there's a driver in the car, maybe there isn't, but they already know who you are because they have your identity. So they just pull up to you, you step in the car, you uh, take it wherever you want, you step out, the payment is managed, everything is already handled. But here's the downside of it. It allows full surveillance. It allows the system to know everything about you. It's able to read your facial expression. It's able to read your temperature. It's able to read your moods. It's able to predict what you're thinking or at least how you're feeling. It's, allowed, it's able to issue you social credits. They already do this in China. You jaywalk, you get some brownie points because they know who jaywalked and where, where you did it. Um, extrapolates this into all aspects of your interaction with others and with the society. Where's your freedom gone? All of your behaviors are recorded, and if the system decides to dock you, they can. They can shut off your wallet, they can shut off your interactions, they can shut off anything about you. This system allows the full Big Brother control. Can we trust them with it, whoever them is? Um, we have some products listed on our website. The uh, category is home and body care. Um, devices, EMF protection, I'm listing here the uh, radiation shield, that's the ADR mat, that's a fabric that's blocking the uh, radiation. The blue shield, that's the device that sends out actively the soothing signals into your environment. We have them in different sizes, from small to large. The smaller ones are good enough for an apartment, larger ones for a house, really big ones for an entire floor of an office building, a store the size of Costco. We have them in three classes, regular, I think it's strong and ultra. The ultra is on all the time and it's capable of protecting you even if there is a 5G antenna right outside your door. So what you do, protect your electric circuits, protect your body, protect yourself. With questions, 
look it up, life-enthusiast.com or call us at 866-543-3388. This is Martin Patella. Thank you for watching this and uh, I'll see you on the other side. This is Life Enthusiast, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. You probably need us more than you expected.